HCAM TV presents Girls Varsity Basketball, and tonight we have the 2-0 Hopkinton Hillers taking on the 2-0 Medfield Warriors. Hi, I'm Tim Halatic here with Steve Spector. And Steve, we are ready to usher in the first Hiller home game of the season. How's it feel to be back? It's been a, it's been a whole year. I got a few more gray hairs, uh, a few more gray hairs and kicked in since last season. But Don't uh, we all? I'm excited. <laughs> well, not you. But uh, no, really a big, big early season match between two undefeated teams, these big rivalry. Uh, even from the youth basketball days when I coached uh, a few years back, mm -hmm. these teams, they always come to play against each other, so it should be a great game. It looks like we're handed over to the public address announcer. Good evening and welcome to Hoffman High School for tonight's girls varsity basketball ball game against the Midfield Warriors. The Dry Valley is committed to the highest ideal of sportsmanship and established a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions haunting, trash talking, and berating of players or officials. The Dry Valley League has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Warnings will not be issued and offenders will be ejected. Please all, please respect all decisions made by officials, please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. And now for the lineup for this evening's game. For the Medfield Warriors, position, starting position, guard, number one, senior, Ali Piet. Forward, number 23, senior, Sophia Ovenet. Guard number 15, junior captain, Maggie McCarthy. Forward number four, senior captain, Lauren Kasari. Guard number 11, senior captain, Megazona. Zona. Coaches for the Medfield for the Warriors are Mark Dickinson. And now, for your hometown, Hockey Killers. Guard number 23, sophomore, Lily Morningstar. Guard number 10, Senior Julia Calasari. Forward number four, number 44, junior captain Heidi Brooklyn. Guard number 12, senior captain Emma Gasha. And forward number 31, senior captain Michaela Bucci. The coaches for the hill is Mike Racco. And now, will we all please stand for the play of our national anthem? These Hillers ended last season with a loss to Notre Dame, 61 to 48, in the sem in the semifinals of the Division II Central Division II Central bracket. And Steve, they're returning a lot of key players from last year's postseason run. Yeah, I mean, there's, if you look at the roster, they're loaded with uh, a lot of depth. Uh, five seniors, uh, and even the underclassmen. There's, you know, they're starting. I think three three seniors and a couple underclassmen. So. Uh, it's great to see Lily Morningstar, a sophomore, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. stepping in the starting lineup, right, you know, in this big game, and you know, and, and also uh, Tim, looking at the 
the stands here. This place, first first home game, two big, you know, Tri Valley League powerhouses. Uh, a lot of people here. Yeah, pretty good energy game. here, yeah. especially for the first game. Definitely first home game, anyway. And yeah. while this is our first broadcast. The girls have already started playing. They are 2-0, as we mentioned before, with a win over Ashland in the first game, 71-49, and a win at dover Sherburn, 68-24. You know, Med and Medfield also being 2-0, this is going to mm -hmm. be a great. It's going to be a great game here. All right, and Pucci takes the tip away right away. Canastrari down the lane, a quick two points for Hawkington. Starting out in the press right away. Aggressive man to man. Interesting idea off midfield, throws it off Gogolin's leg, still warrior ball. Well, that's a, that's a, a great start so far uh, with a basket three, minute, three seconds into the game mm -hmm. and then a lot of, a lot of pressure uh, full court, so. Quick pass in, three launched, rimmed out, touched last by Gogolin, midfield retains possession. I mean, Hopkinton has got, a, has got some tough match up here, uh, you know, with a height and length uh, even with Lily Morningstar not be being the, the tallest player on the mm -hmm. team, but she can create a lot of trouble defensively mm -hmm. and uh, disrupting, uh, you know, the top of the, the top of the key. Especially as an on-ball defender, Definitely. that's where her strength lies, I think. Ball loose in the middle, Medfield corrals it, driving down layup, off the front of the rim, no good. Pucci grabs the board, stolen away by Lauren Cassieri. Medfield again with a three launch, Ali Petit. No good again, but Petit fights for her own board. Loose ball, finally corralled by Hopkinton. Morningstar tries to force the issue, ends up turning it over. Petit comes up with the loose ball. A lot of bent up excitement being the first home game here. <laughs> yeah, a little frantic in the last yep. few possessions. McCarthy with it at the top of the key for Medfield. Makes a nice move, cuts down the lane, and a charge. Emma Lakash is sacrificing her body for Ooh, the foul. Took one for the team there. That was quite a collision. And, you know, uh, I think the ref, uh, I mean, I think she was set, but it was a very close mm -hmm. call. That could have gone either way, but the ref gave it to the home team on that one. <laughs> As he should have. Yeah, right, of course. <laughs> that goes without saying. Morningstar finally gets a pass half court. She looks like she's taking it the whole way. Goes up. Lock and a foul. Morningstar will be shooting two. Well, I took it right up the lane, uh, dribbled through about three midfield players and um, got a call for a foul on. Um, I, I didn't see who it was, but it was mm -hmm. a good block, but got a little body contact at the same time. Morning Stars first is off the back iron. Still a two zip lead for Hopkinton. A little different setup here, uh, Tim, without the big scoreboard we had. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting used to that, but right. at, the, at least the, we get the right fouls. L last year at the end, we were having some issues with the fouls. Oh, so yep. mm -hmm. We were, had to guess about that, but I know that we'll take care of that this year. Morningstar missed her second free throw, tried to grab the rebound, ended up bouncing off her foot. Medfield with the ball. Again, still 2-0 Hopkinton. Illegal screen on Lauren Cassieri. Hopkinton will take over. Yeah, she kind of slid as she set the screen, mm -hmm. and she also slid a little bit, so the referee's caught up to that. Medfield looks like they're using a zone press. Not too hard for Hawkinson to get by, but it does take a little bit of time. Morningstar drives, puts the ball up, oh, layup I'm just lucky. trickles out. And a foul call that looks like on Hopkinton. Boy, these rims are pretty tight, Tim, to start the game. He's a couple minutes in, it's only 2-0. Two, two um, Medfield had a few shots going in and out, and that, that's another one for the Hopkinton team that just kind of went in and out. But good, good, good take to uh, the hoop by Morningstar. Yeah, I was going to say, good news is Morningstar's getting through the lane when she wants. Yeah. Pucci guarding. We met out top. And it looks like a reach-in foul called on Ivy Gogolin. Medfield will inbound. 
do have a, just looking at the new scoreboard, as I mentioned earlier, it looks like if, if, the, if, the, if the scoreboard's correct, Medfield already has five fouls. Wow. Uh, to just one for the Hillers, so it's only um, two minutes into the into the first half, yep, so we could be shooting a lot of foul shots this first half here. Three launch blocked by Canastrari. Great play to use her length. That's a tough matchup defensively if you're going against her. She's a tall, kind of a six foot guard. You don't see many of those. Got a in, long wingspan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, Morningstar, the primary ball defender here, covering McCarthy up at the top of the key. Medfield swings it around. Pass in the middle, kicked out to McCarthy. She launches a three, just too strong. Canastari grabs the board. Morningstar wide over for three, passes it up, finds Keveny. And a pass thrown away for Hawkington. <coughs> That's too bad. Back court. Still a little frantic out there, Tim. You know, they need to settle down a little bit, uh, both teams, really. Uh, got a little lucky on that uh, a bounce, uh, a, an errant pass that ended up in uh, keeping his hands. But mm -hmm. again, just a tight game. Two zip. Since that opening basket, right. we thought we were going to have a scoring fest, and then it's been the opposite ever since. Again, I think there's a little bit of uh, getting their legs under them, mm -hmm. getting used to the new home, uh, the home court for the Hillers, and both teams trying to impress the home crowd. I guess <laughs> both teams kind of checking each other out. Hopkinton whipping the ball around, trying to beat this zone. Morningstar drives and gets fouled on the drive. Hopkinton will inbound under Medfield's basket, or their own basket, excuse me. I think the Medfield coach, uh, Nickerson, uh, is maybe addressing the fairly... Foul disparity? Yeah, there's a bit of a <laughs> six to one at this point, only two and a half minutes into the game, whatever it is, th three minutes into the game. Right. Canastari thought about the three, pass it in to Pucci. Pucci off the backboard, finally gets the roll. And we now have our second basket of the game, almost four minutes later. Looks like we got, a, we got some full court pressure again by the Hillers, which is their trademark. Yep. Always starting with pressure. Coach Greco loves to do it. But McCarthy beats it for, hot, for Medfield and then throws the pass away. Thought someone was going to be there. Results in Hiller ball. Medfield with a little half court pressure. Little over four minutes left in the first quarter. Only 4-0. Hiller advantage. It's been tough going all day. Another turn over there. This one, Lakasha. Has it picked away by Meg Zona. Wide open underneath. Wide open down low was Sophia Wimay. Could not get it ball. to fall. And then a jump ball on the rebound. A 1-2-2 two, two half court press by the midfield. Finally, the Hillers get by. Ball circulating around the key, around the outskirts of the key. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Lakasha decides to drive, throws up the floater. Oh, unlucky. No love from the rim. Grabbed by Medfield. And now Petit brings it up the court. Looking for help, finally driving oh, is McCarthy. Nice she finds Lauren Cassieri down low who gets hacked and will be shooting two. Looks like Julia got, a, got her on the arm there. Hiller's still pitching a shout out here. Three minutes <laughs> to go in the first quarter. That's a little unusual. I spoke too soon. There. All right, and there <laughs> it goes. <laughs> Cassieri knocks down the first one.
Kylie Corby and Kate Hugner in for the Hillers. First substitution for either side. Both free throws are good from Cassieri. Now Hopkinton maintains a two point lead. Morningstar stuck around the corner. Looks like it's going back to midfield. Gets jump caught ball. up, yeah, jump ball. Now we have Warrior possession. Little discussion, a little bit of a backcourt discussion. I think the, the coach uh, from Medfield is suggesting that there was a backcourt violation that the ref missed. Uh, that's my interpretation from up here in right. the perch. But. <laughs> nice trap from Hopkinton, stealing it away is Hubner. She drives, tries to kick it back out. We met, gets her hands on it, and is fouled and gets the ball for Medfield. Hubner adding a little spark coming off the bench. Coming off some picks is McCarthy. She brings it up for Medfield. Looking to set some type of offense up. She seems to have the ball in her hands quite a bit. Captain of the Medfield team. Junior. We met drives, loses the ball. And a reach and foul called on Hopkinton. Kind of got a little bailed out in that one. It looked like she almost I was about walked. To say. And uh, there was a, some sort of a contact there, mm -hmm. but not a, a non-shooting foul. Trying to even the fouls up a little bit. At any rate, still midfield ball. Three launch from McCarthy, no good. Finally corralled by Keeveny. Uh -oh. Now she throws it away. McCarthy just behind the free throw line, no good. Petit with the board. She's looking for help. Pass across court to Zona. Back to, back to We May. We Met. Also looking for someone to give the rock to. She finally decides to drive, throw it up. Off the backboard, no good, grabbed by Pucci. Pucci, nice eyes ahead of her, finds Keeveny. Fast break layup for Hawkinson. Great execution Beautiful by pass. Pucci. And now Medfield trying the same thing. Keeveny gets her hands up and knocks it out. Great play by Keeveny, both ends. Quick shot from Medfield off the side of the rim, but another offensive board for the Warriors. Three from McCarthy, short, Pucci with the board. And she gets caught with a double dribble. Tried to cut through some defenders and found herself with the violation. I think both teams are like swarming if there's a loose ball or a rebound. And it's not uh, a given that they're gonna just move, pull the ball up the court. Uh, Medfield's created some difficulty for the Hillers to get the ball, uh, and there's a, there's a good example there. And Medfield with their first substitution of the game. Coming in is Emma Anderson, and the Hillers also respond with a substitution. Canastrari coming back in the game. Pass down low to a wide open Meg Zona. She can't finish, ball bounces out of bounds. Remains with Medfield. Wow, that's a tight, tight game. Again, these, these rims uh, are a little tight for more for Med, uh, Medfield, rather. But, um, you know, the Hillers with their height have disrupted a lot of the shots. Even if they haven't blocked them, they've certainly disrupted them. A 6-2 Hiller advantage with a minute 20 left in the first period, first quarter. Another jump shot miss from Medfield, but another offensive board. Petit grabs this one, launches it to Megzona, who puts up a three. No good. Quick jump ball call. And Maggie McCarthy grabs the offensive board, but yep, like you said, Steve, another jump ball. This one to the Hillers. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, the only two points that Medfield has is from the foul line, mm -hmm. so they've got a minute left in the quarter. No, no baskets from, from Medfield. Canstari finds Hubner. Now driving is Callie Corby, her shot no good. Canastrari with the offensive board, puts it up and in. Now an 8-2 lead for Hopkinton. McCarthy drives, kicks it over to Zona. 
three, no good again. Pucci grabs the board, throws it up to Canastrari, who runs the whole way for the layup and gets it to trickle in. She, she did a great job keeping herself under control. Um, instead of going up flying into the rim, she got herself uh, contained, or two feet. Uh, good finish there. Petit with a nice bounce pass down low to Lauren Cassieri, who goes up and gets fouled again. That's Kiveny's second, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, you are correct, Kiveny's yep. second. Yep. So I've uh, got to keep an eye on that. And credit to Pucci on the last Canastari layup, again with her eyes down the court, looking for her teammates. Cassieri knocks down her third free throw of the game. Been a pretty, pretty one-sided first quarter so far, and it looks like it's going to be a, a good lead going in the second quarter. Cassieri, four for four from the line, and she will take a rest as Anna Wytrecki comes in. Better you than me to pronounce that one. <laughs> <laughs> Seven seconds left in the quarter. Pucci with it on along the baseline, stepped out. Turnover Hillers, Medfield will have four and a half seconds left to get a shot off. And Morningstar will come back in to try to limit those opportunities. Yeah, taking Keeveny out with four seconds left, good move. Don't Just want a th third foul. Exactly. Three, two, one. McCarthy throws up the three. Strong off the backboard, no good. And the first quarter ends with a 10-4 Hiller lead. Well, that was a pretty dominant quarter for the Hillers to get the first home game of the season started and big, again big crowd here you can kind of feel the energy and they get the, the Hoppington cheerleaders here now going to do a little routine. Certainly, Julia Canastrari's had a good uh, first quarter with a couple hoops and uh, I think a blocked shot. And, um, you know, good to have, get, have a couple girls come off the bench, and mm -hmm. Callie and uh, Kate. And uh, off to a good start, 10-4 after the first quarter. I mean, both teams are getting the shots that they want um, to what you said earlier about the offense. Both teams, it looks like, are getting their shots, but just not getting any luck from the rim so far. Well, yeah, and I mean, Medfield's got a goose egg in the for, for, <laughs> yeah. for all of their shots have literally haven't gone in, which I'm sure the, um, oh, yeah, I mean, we just, uh, state champion Hiller volleyball team are in the house. Uh, congratulations to them with mm -hmm. their Absolutely. coaches. and uh, certainly Taken got, in the sights, the yeah. opening girls varsity game. They've certainly had a, a, a great run and took care of business and have earned the right to walk around with a little swagger around, around the, the school and around the Tri Valley League and in, in this in the state, so that's good good for them. And hopefully uh, they're here to spread their mojo. Exactly, and you know the Hiller girls uh, and basketball squad is well positioned for a good run themselves. So uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I think <laughs> of I think we're off to a good start so mm -hmm. far. Well, the forecast is good. We'll just have to see where the season takes us. Second quarter start momentarily. Referees having a discussion with Coach Nickerson. Seems that's been happening quite often tonight. Not sure what about. They look like they're laughing. Well, you know what? Um, I'm looking at the fouls now, Tim, and they might have made some adjustments to that, the total. I think they might have been uh, putting all the early fouls uh, to Medfield, oh, it okay. looks like they've corrected that. So now yep. the Hillers have five fouls in Medfield four. So perhaps that was part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm just speculating, so. <laughs> of course. In any <laughs> event, we are off to a start in the second quarter. Medfield with possession. Cassieri drives, no good on the layup. Another offensive board for Medfield. McCarthy grabs this one. Emma Anderson launches the three. A bit too strong, Pucci with the board. Again, looking up, finds Canastari. Canastari runs and called for a travel. She struggled with a bit with that a bit last year. Her first one thus far. Yeah, well, I, I'll say this. She, uh, she, the Medfield player did a good job kind of getting in her lane. Mm -hmm. She was looking to uh, do a crossover, almost anticipated it, almost telegraphed her going in, you know, to cut 
uh, the, the, with a crossover move from the right hand to the left, and the uh, midfield player anticipated that, got in her way. And Put her in a tough spot. Yep. <laughs> midfield ball, they're inbounding under their own hoop. Hopkinton with a little pressure. At least Morningstar is up tight on McCarthy. She drives, kicks it over to Petit. Lane wide open for her. McCarthy gets it back for three. No good again. Medfield not shooting very well, of course, wow. at all. But from three, they got to be close to 10 misses so far. I mean, that's highly unusual, you know, at this point in the game, having zero field goals. I don't want to be redundant, but that's, mm -hmm. what's, that's, right. what, that's what we have to talk about yeah. so far. <laughs> Morningstar drives the whole way, gets right down. Great drive, but can't finish. Bit too strong. And now Medfield running. Pass down low. McCarthy gets bumped. No good on the shot, but she will be shooting too. Looks like uh, fouls on Kate Hubner. Five foot five junior. Her second foul. And Medfield's fifth and sixth free throws coming up for tonight. First one trickles in for the junior captain, Maggie McCarthy. I mean, they're shooting, uh, they're batting a thousand from the free throw <laughs> line, and they're and they got a goose egg from from the everywhere right. else. But and uh, six for six from Med the line. Medfield's always a very well coached, well disciplined team, and you know free throws. That that's probably at, at this point keeping them into the game. Right. Of course, the Hillers aren't scoring too much themselves, so we still have a close Ooh. one. And Morningstar knew it; she got caught. Double dribble. No place to hide there, <laughs> with the referee right right to her left. Another turnover for the Hillers. Petit with it for Medfield. Tries to throw it down low to McCarthy. She corrals it. Morningstar doing a great job. Canastrari sticks her hands up and, grab and steals it and then draws the foul. Sophia Wimet, uh, senior forward. Got caught with uh, a good, good, good attempt, but she got some body on that. Lakasha turns the ball over. We met, makes up for a mistake right there. Goes and finds McCarthy, who drives. Left-handed layup, no good. And now Pucci running with it. Looks up again, finds Canastrari for the layup, Ooh. and it trickles in. Again, that's a, that's a good, uh, good finish. Uh, she didn't have a whole lot of room to make that basket uh, a really nice Pass, uh, I think it was from Morningstar. I, I lost track of that, but uh, again, a, a, a timeout great start. midfield. I don't know if they have, they have it for 11 points. That's got to be 12. Right. Yep. That was just uh, a layup, so it should be 12. So uh, certainly, you up and down. The girls are uh, bring, bringing their energy to the first home game of the season, and and I think we have a game here Thursday night. Is that true? Yes, we do. Uh, Hopkinton on yep on the 22nd this Thursday. Hopkinton will host Norton. And I guess we'll be back here. I got to check with my <laughs> wife and check with the schedule, but I, right. I think I'll be able to do that one as well. But maybe we can take a minute and, and acknowledge our uh, our team here: uh, the producers, Mike Tarosian and John Ritz. Uh, camera folks, uh, Mike Tarosian, double duty. John Ritz, <laughs> double duty, and Mary Anat and um, Tom Dings directing, and Samantha Dings is doing the graphics tonight. So thanks to all that, all those folks, and uh, doing it on their time here. <laughs> for a number of years and they do a great job. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. There's Mary Raven. There she is. She's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and the boys are in Medfield tonight too. Uh, right. I, I, that's, that's always a tough place to play. You know, I see these. Medfield's always feels a tough team. Yep. And another note about that last Canastrari layup, that's Pucci's third assist on fast break layups. She's really had her eyes down the court and has been a big part of the Hiller scoring thus far. And Canastrari again running on the, on, the, on the defensive end, pokes the ball out of bounds. Medfield retains, but a good play nonetheless. I mean, so far, Canastrari, all of her baskets are, have, have been of the layup persuasion, mm -hmm. but she's, she is uh, very capable of heating it up from the outside. Uh, hasn't had a need to do that quite yet. We met the nice backdoor cut still. Medfield cannot get a shot to drop. Lakasha does a great job to save the ball. And now Hopkinton trying to press the issue. 
but turns it over once again. We met, Drott shoots a three, no good. Another offensive board for Ali Petit. They've had a lot of offensive boards. Meg Zona in the paint, kicks it over to McCarthy. She launches the shot, finally. Ice is broken for Medfield at five, the 520 mark in the second quarter. Looking for a half court trap. Morningstar and dribbles into trouble, but is able to recover it and get the um, jump ball. Good sportsmanship by Meg Zona of Medfield helping, helping uh, Lily up after off the floor after a big <laughs> scramble there. Bodies flying everywhere. Pucci will inbound the ball. 5.08 left in the second quarter. 12.8 Hiller lead. It's not very often that you can say a team scores their first basket in the second quarter and they're only down four. Exactly. Even just scoring their first basket in the second quarter. Right. That's a tribute to uh, the Hiller defense. Canistrari launches a three, no good, but Pucci grabs the offensive board and is fouled on the putback. Two more free throws coming for Hopkinton. Yeah, Lauren Cassieri, the, one of the captains for Medfield, is, has a kind of a questionable look uh, at the referee saying, I'm just standing here with my hands up, but there was body contact. Those are always a tough decision for the refs to make. It's subjective. There's always one person who isn't happy on a foul yeah. call. But we're happy with that call because <laughs> it was a, for the home team. So Of course. <laughs> Pucci's first free throw trickles in. Second one just rims out. 13-8 lead for Hawkinson. Zona drives, kicks it over to oh, We wow. Met, and she travels. Turnovers have been abundant for both teams tonight. That was a tough one. They could have, well, anyway, she took a couple baby steps, but, you know, in the, in the NBA, that's not a travel, <laughs> but certainly in the uh, Tri-Valley tri League, that's a. Right, we have a bit of different rule set. <laughs> Canistrari oh, nice drives, nice play, can't quite finish. And now Zona brings it up for Medfield. Looking to get some offense. Cross-court pass, Aaron Seibel launches the three, bounces up, hits one of the poles out of bounds. Hiller ball. Boy, uh, it's a tough shooting percentage for Medfield. They're one for whatever they've taken. Mm -hmm. it, it must be about 20 shots. And um, that's just a, a, an estimate, but right. I think it's probably in that neighborhood. And I'm sure they, they're much better than that, but that's, a, again, a, a, a tribute to the Hiller, Hiller D. Canistrari fighting for a loose ball. Draws a foul from Sophia we met. I think that's a one and one situation at this point. Canistrari is typically automatic. I don't want to jinx her here, but she's, <laughs> she's got such a, a great uh, shot. Good form of this, this type of game for her. Could be a big, big night for her. And like you said, Steve, first one drops through. She's got really good form, good backs. You know, it's very consistent. Good. good Gets a uh, nice arc on the ball for sure. You kind of see that rotation. Second one swishes through. 15-8 lead, four minutes left in the second quarter. Again, Morningstar on McCarthy. We met the nice idea, oh, trying to pass bad. it down low to Cassieri. She couldn't get it. But then uh, Medfield takes the ball right back. And now Hawkinton fighting for it, Emma Lacascia. And a quick jump ball call, this one going to Medfield. Yeah, body's flying again. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the Hillers did a good job, got the ball back and then forced a pass and Medfield stole the ball for about the sixth or seventh time. And then another turnover by Medfield. Morningstar takes it, drives all the way. Great decision, oh. gets the and one. Lily Morningstar. Gets the crowd fired up with that move. Again, not, not very big in stature, but a huge heart taken, taken to the hoop, under control. Uh, put a little spin in the ball off the glass, and uh, it got a forgiving bounce and went in. 
She only had one defender to beat in front of her, put her head down, and was able to get it done. Now looking to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. No good on the free throw. But still a 17-8 lead for Hopkinton. Risky pass down low, and it's picked off by Canistrari, who's looking to force the issue for the Hillers. Finds Morningstar. Lakasha with the bounce pass down low. Pucci thought her teammate was going to be there, ended up passing it right to We Met. Another turnover. Nice pick and roll there. Shot fired from Seibel. She drains this one. First three-pointer for Medfield. 17-11 well, now. Five foot four guard coming off the bench. They, I'll tell you, that's a big hoop for Medfield. They really needed it. Morningstar oh, wow. makes a great play to save it. Canistrari drives. Layup up and good. Great play by Morningstar. That's a two-point save she just made. Probably four point because Medfield would have taken it and gotten an easy layup. Lakasha looks like they're called for the blocking foul as McCarthy was driving. Got some feedback from the Hiller fans on that <laughs> one. Um, it, it wasn't wasn't kind, but feedback nonetheless. Yeah, no, it was fine. It was it was okay, but just expressing their opinion that they didn't agree with the call. I think that's fair, right? As long as it's in good good spirit. Price of admission, right? First free throw on the one and one, no good. Pucci grabs the board. Just over two minutes left in the first half. Eight point lead for Hopkinton. Both teams struggling offensively, though have started to pick it up in the last few minutes. Pucci drives, throws up a tough shot short of the rim, grabbed by Cassieri. Meg Zona throws it down low to We Met. She can't handle it. Ball rolls out of bounds. Yeah, both teams have sort of forced a lot of passes in. Again, I think it's just early season jitters, if you will. And and um, I think as the, the game goes on and the season goes on, a lot, of, a lot of those mistakes will be eliminated. Canistrari drives down the lane, throws the shot up, bounces off of Pucci, the referee says. Medfield will take over. Some more murmurs from the crowd on that call yeah, also. that was a close call, but. And it looks like we have another timeout for Medfield. We have a couple of uh, legendary coaches in the house here. Uh, former Framingham South High, Smokey Mirazi. Sm Smokey's a great coach for, I, I went to Framingham North High back mm -hmm. a few years ago and I don't want to date myself, but it was a while ago. <laughs> and uh, Coach Mirazi coached South at that time and he's, uh, he lives in town here, and it's always good to see Coach Morezzi. And also uh, Coach Dick Bliss is in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously uh, two, two coaching legends in this area. So um, I tell you what, with a minute and a half left in the half, mm -hmm. and Medfield has one two-pointer and one three-pointer. Yep. That's pretty, pretty amazing. And, and again, uh, the Hillers just... Again, it's, it's partly the, the Medfield team not hitting their shots, but certainly mm -hmm. the Hillers have disrupted a lot of them too. So, Right, they've definitely played their part. And just in case there's any injuries here, we have one of my neighbors, a good friend, Maura White, the trainer for Hopkinton, is in the <laughs> house making sure everybody's safe and sound here. You should be good though, Steve, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I might need it. I'm, she may need to get, you know, check me out. I don't know, we'll see. Right now it's a, not a close game, but at the end of the game, you, you never know. Metfield brings it up. Zona oh, looks like a walk. got caught. Tried to pull back the pass, couldn't stop from traveling. Callie Corby takes a rest for the Hillers. Coming back in is Kate Hubner, the junior.
Now Lakasha brings it over half court for the Hillers. Gets caught in a double team. Throws it off of a Medfield player. Still Hiller ball. Medfield likes to trap. You know, as soon as you cross over, they do a double team and it's caused some problems. There was one of them, but the Hillers still have the ball. And another travel called on the Hillers. Canastrari caught again. Looks like she just kind of dragged her pivot foot on that one. Again, the referee standing right next to her. McCarthy brings it up for the Warriors. Turns away from the pick, steps back and launches the three off the front of the rim. Bounces out of bounds, Hiller ball. The clock's walking. Oh. There we go. A few seconds roll off. But I guess, but they may have to fix that. I don't know if they're going to correct that or not, but they lost about four or five seconds on that. Maybe they'll hold it. Nope. Uh oh. Again, Medfield putting pressure on it. I'll tell you, they're hanging around. It's not like this is a blowout. Mm -hmm. you, if Medfield hit a couple more shots, it'd be almost tied up. So. Right. One, four, five point run, and they're right back in it. Medfield with it after the Hopkinton turnover. Canastrari tries to steal it, passes it over to Zona. Zona for three, rattles in. 19-14 now, 30 seconds left in the half. Hubner loses the ball. McCarthy tries to launch it up, but it's stolen back by Hubner. Yeah, Hubner making up for her mistake. She anticipated, oh, that's, a, that's too bad. And Morningstar rushing, and she throws the ball away again. We met launches the three for Medfield, no good. Cassieri grabs the board, cannot get it. Petit slaps the ball off of Canastrari. Great play by the small guard from Medfield. I mean, I'll tell you what, the Warriors of Medfield, they have, uh, and I've lost track of how many <laughs> offensive rebounds they've gotten, and they just scrambled. They are crashing the paint. They're getting anything they want. It hasn't there. been pretty, that's for sure, but they're certainly getting a ton of opportunities. In four seconds, they're going to launch it. I don't think they're going to get it off. Petit doesn't see the clock. We met launches the three. Air ball. Pro I think it would have counted yeah, had it gone. I think it would have. But in any event, we have a 19 to 14 lead for the Hillers going into halftime. And it looks like the cheerleaders are out to perform another routine. what it takes. Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes?
Hi, welcome to Break Gardens. Just make sure that you water regularly and through November. So I think we can go ahead and start uh, back going here. I think fall is one of the best times to plant roses. When you can squeeze your soil and hold it together, that's good. And we are back, about a minute away from starting the second half. We have a 19 to 14 Hopkinton Hiller lead. And Steve, I guess the story of that first half is a lot of shots, but not many going in. Well, yeah, that's, I think that's part of the story, Tim. And the other part of the story is both teams were a little frantic. Um, Medfield created a whole lot of turnovers and, uh, and vice versa. But, you know, I think, I think um, both teams kind of came out late from the from the locker rooms. Medfield, no warm up, and um, it'll, we'll see if both teams settle down a little bit more and see if the the rims kind of loosened up because it was certainly a, certainly a sloppy but aggressive and uh, frantic first half. And right away, Hopkinton, just as quick as they did in the first half, coming out with a basket to start things off. Baseline jumper from Pucci. Well, nice anticipation. Nice steal from Morningstar, able to get her hands on it. She almost took it the whole way, tried to pass, and McCarthy did a good job getting her hands on that one. Now Morningstar on the other side launches a three and nails it. Literally Morningstar. Sophomore sensation leading the Hillers. Well, she's evolved definitely. I remember last year as a freshman, you know, she, she looks like she's grown a little bit and she's just stronger. And Definitely more confident. And there's another, another example. She just stole the ball, so. Dribbles it off her foot, though. Taken back by Petit. She launches the three. No good. Canastrari with the board. Nope, can't quite get it. Grabbing the offensive board and putting it up and in is Sophia we met. Eight-point lead for the Hillers. Seven minutes left in the third. Metfield likes this 1-2-2 two, two half court press, Tim, and it's caused, it's caused trouble. Yeah, the Hillers have some issues with it. Morningstar in the corner for three, throws it down low to Gogolin. And that shot, that foul was on the floor, no shot. First foul of the game for we met. Ivy has the ability to take over the game, too. She, she, we didn't talk, talk much about her the first half, so... You know, that was a good, uh, good. She's been quiet thus far, you know, yep. Good, good pass by Morningstar into her for a, a layup, and then it, I guess it was a foul before the shot there. And Gogolin will inbound it. Hopkinson trying to break this zone. A 1 2 2 zone for Medfield. And look, Canastari caught in oh, the corner, nice. but a great play to find Pucci, who makes an even better pass to Gogolin down low, who pivots and makes a nice layup. Now great the, offense from the Hillers. It was great. There. I mean, Canastari was in trouble in the corner, but she was able to get the ball out of there and led to a layup. Driving is Cassieri. She draws the foul. Hitting the floor hard was Oof. Lakashia. I would have to disagree with that. I thought I thought um, Emma Emma had her feet down. I don't know. It, it was close, but I thought Emma, Emma had position there. But the refs saw it the other way. <laughs> not the first time that's going to happen. Yeah, right. Not the last. <laughs> and Cassieri calmly knocks down the first free throw. Nine point lead for the Hillers. Cassieri again. She's six of six from the line yeah, today. Good, good free throw shooting team, Medfield. And that is keeping them in this game with the lack of offense that they've had. 
Morningstar breaks away from Megzona, who's called for the reach in. Pucci inbounding, finds Lakashia. Tough pass to try to get it to Gogolin and turned over. McCarthy kicks it over for Petit. Nice pass down low. Cassieri turns, puts it up and in. Cassieri's been the bright spark thus well, far she's for got a, Medfield. At least a dozen points, I think, for her. You know, a lot of them from the free throw, but free throw line, but that was a really nice finish. Oh, that's tough. That's too bad. Another there. turnover. Lakashia throws this one away. And Medfield almost gives it right back. Petit looking to get it down low. Nothing doing there. Nice pass we met with the good cut. Finds Cassieri. No good on that one. And Canastari in some trouble. Now Morningstar on the break. Put numbers. And another travel violation called on the Hillers. And we have substitutions for Hopkinton. Regan Keeveny coming in as well as Callie Corby. Canastari and Lakashia will take a seat. Yeah, the Hillers have got a, a few quick hoops and then they've, they've uh, gone cold a little bit the last couple minutes here, so. McCarthy with it at the top of the key, almost picked away by Morningstar. Driving was Meg Zona. Looks like she had an open shot. Tried to pass it off. Lucky for Medfield. Ball hits off a of Hiller. Only nine seconds on the shot clock. Hillers go to a 2 3 zone with the ball coming in from out of bounds underneath the hoop. On the back to a. That's a big Petit zone. T fires it down low to Zona. Again, deflected off of a Hiller. That back line of the zone is a, you know, five nine, six feet, and six feet. Mm -hmm. A lot of length back but there. And cutting was Wee May using her body to seal off Morningstar, but Morningstar feisty defense there, able to keep her hands on the ball. Yeah, she's gotten really strong. I, again, as I said a minute ago, she's she's gotten a lot stronger being a sophomore, and she she was uh, determined to not let go of that ball there. Oh, nice big block, block. Goglin, Petit was driving, tried to throw up the floater. Gogolin rejects it. Good timing on that. Avoided the foul. Morningstar drives, kicks it over, draws the foul. Meg Zona, another foul on her. That's her second. 26 to 20 lead for Hopkinton. Four minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter. Tough pass there from Keeveny. Morningstar like and McCarthy tipped. both hit it. They both are saying, hello, uh, do you have that one? No, do you have that one? They, neither one of them do, so they're going to call a jump ball. It was a tough call. Both Morningstar and McCarthy hit it. I couldn't tell who hit it last yeah. from up here. But that's we, what we have the we, possession we at. We don't have for. the replay uh, in this at the, at the high school level. but. No. <laughs> Callie Corby. Nice pass to Gogolin. Gogolin pivots and tries to find Pucci. Ends up turning it over. And now Petit bringing it up for Medfield. We met, launches the three just off the rim. No good. Oh, Pucci, nice. again, the great play. Eyes up, eyes up ahead of her, finds Regan Keeveny, who calmly drops in the bucket. Gogolin got the rebound, quick outlet pass, one other, and second pass, and easy layup. That was great. Keeveny hands on the ball again. This time, Medfield recovers. Thought about the three a few times, no good, but pass it in to Lauren Cassieri, and she again knocks it down and one for Medfield. Well, she's single handedly keeping them in the game, uh, Medfield. I, I'll tell you what, she's, she's a heck of a player, and senior forward, 5'11. 
She's doing everything out there for Medfield. Canastrari subs back in the game. Pucci takes a break. Cassieri will be looking to make it an old-fashioned three-point play. And uh, no good off the back rim. And Canastrari bringing it up for Hopkinton. I Looks know. like a foul called on Gogolin. I really didn't see that. I don't know. I'm a bit confused also. But yeah. I don't want to sound like a homer up here, but uh, I mean, she just got position. It was a good entry pass. And the referee saw it differently, so. At any rate, Medfield ball, six point lead for Hopkinton. Three minutes left in the third quarter. McCarthy backs off of Morningstar, launches the shot off the front of the rim. Another offensive board. Meg Zona at the three-point line, kicks it over to We Met. She drives, blocked from behind by Gogolin. That's her second block in the last minute. Callie Corby looking to give the ball up, gets it poked away. Still Hopkinson ball as Pucci comes back in. Short bursts of rest for these yep. bench players Goldman's here. coming out for a minute. She's been up and down the court, a couple blocks. That was a good run for, for her. Probably be another minute or two before we see her come back in. Morningstar with it at the three-point line. Ball loose, Canastraya recovers. Not much happening on offense. This possession for the Hillers. Shot from Keeveny, no good. Pucci gets in there and grabs the board. Another jump ball. This one awarded to Medfield. Boy, it's kind of what we thought it would be, a tight game between two 2-0 two teams. It's yeah. a little less scoring than we thought. It definitely, but uh, <laughs> it's a little better this half. Oh, absolutely in terms of the scoring department, and uh, both teams seem a little bit more composed. I definitely think we won't match the turnover numbers from the first half. That shot just trickles out for Medfield, oh. and the Pucci fires it, it's stolen by Zona. Great play by Zona. About two feet away from Pucci when she fired that pass. Yeah, that, that's happened it. on a few occasions tonight. The Hillers work really hard, get the defensive rebound, and uh, Medfield anticipates th the pass. Ooh, that's a oh, Cassieri, that would have been a, it was a great idea, but Zona hadn't quite reestablished herself yet. And the turnover yeah, goes come, to Hopkinton. Got to come back from out of bounds before <laughs> you get the ball back. But. It was a good idea, but. Oh. And then Morningstar thought Corby was going to keep running through a bounce pass. Coach Greco's a uh, little head scratcher there. They've done that a few times tonight. Again, I think it's just early in the season. Those are the mistakes that will eventually uh, be erased. Be less hopefully. frequently yeah. happening during the season. Petit oh, wow. grabs the loose ball and throws a high arcing layup off the glass. Again, Goglin checking back in. Lakashia as well. Morningstar finds Canastrari. Canastrari, her dribble goes off a warrior leg. And Corby and Keaveny will sit down. Yeah, unfortunately for Lily, she um, you know, she brought the ball up right, you know, right in the lane, tried to dish it off, but when she did that, she sort of telegraphed it and Medfield jumped in the in there. Canastrari's three is no good. Morningstar grabs the offensive board. Canastrari gets another chance. This one no good as well. And Petit grabs the board. Three launched from McCarthy, and she knocks it down. Well, all of a sudden, a one-point game uh, with a, under a minute to go in the third quarter. This one's setting up to be quite a finish here in the fourth. Gogolin drives, draws the foul. Aggressive move from Gogolin. She's rewarded with two free throws. I think, Tim, she got away with a little bit of a travel when she, she hopped a little bit right in front of the ref, and it was subtle, but uh, um, I think... Uh, the ref uh, cut a little slack on that one, but she <laughs> certainly drew the foul, and let's hopefully hope she can uh, get both of these free throws. First one rims out. 
28-27, Hiller's lead with 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Second one, nothing but net. Two-point lead now for Hopkinton. Zona bounces it in to McCarthy. She drives. Fouled on the floor. Looks like on Lily. Morningstar second. Medfield will inbound. Shot clock is turned off. They can use these last 20 seconds if they wish. Morningstar takes a seat. Huebner back in. She's been on the court most of the night, so. That endless energy from the sophomore. <laughs> Medfield kicking the ball around, trying to find a good shot. And they do, we met short on the three, but grabbed by Cassieri. She puts her head down and throws it off the backboard, 29-29. And no shot for Hopkinton. Wow. And Medfield, really. Closing the gap there, and we now we have a tie game yeah, going there, into there, the fourth. There is no gap anymore. <laughs> there, there used to be a gap after, at halftime, but I'll tell you, um, Lauren Cassieri of Medfield, I, I've lost track of her points, but she's got to be approaching 15 to 18. Uh, yeah, I'd say. she's got you know two thirds of those points I think uh, for Medfield, and she's keeping them in the game for sure. We have the, the, the Hiller cheerleaders now doing a, doing their thing. Overall, a, overall a really uh, a good game, and we gotta, we're gonna. Oh, I'm sorry. Four, three, they're, they're gonna be doing a raffle here. Seven, yep. Six, two, Well, we had a 50-50 raffle. Um, I didn't win, but I didn't even participate, so I sh there was no way I was going to win anyway. So uh. <laughs> that'd be nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as we said, we got a we got a tie ball game going in the fourth quarter. Let's hope the Hillers can uh, maintain their composure and try to contain Lauren Cassieri of, of Medfield. I don't know. Who, uh, Pucci's been trying to deal with her, and. Um, it's been marginally successful in that area. And then, and then on, the, on the Hiller side, Canestrari, this is, could be her time to take over the game as well. We'll see how that goes. All right, Hopkinton will inbound the ball first. Again, facing off against this midfield zone. Ball circulating around the three-point line. Lakasha decides to launch one. She knocks it down. Big hoop for Emma. Good, good job. Three-point lead now for Hopkinton. Medfield looking to answer. McCarthy takes a tough hit, hits the floor. She gets up. Foul called on Medf on uh, Hopkinton. Excuse me. Pucci's third. I'll tell you, Emma Lakasha. That was a. Uh, I, I don't recall if she's had any hoops earlier in this game. But I believe that was her first. That yeah. was a huge one because they hadn't scored in quite a, a, a while. They were winning 29 to 21 or something like that. So that was good to see. Great play from Cassieri to find Zona, but the give and go could not go. And then skying off the backboard is Ali Petit. She has been a force on the offensive glass for Medfield thus far and gets a layup there. Hopkinton salvages what almost was a turnover, and find, Canastrari finds herself with, for, with a wide open layup. McCarthy Ooh. with the layup. Back and forth. Just on the other end, 34-32. Excuse me, 34-34 now. Right, there you go. Oh, forced it. 
Zona with it for Medfield. She finds a wide open. Patiu turns, can't finish. Crashing the glasses, we met, and we have another jump ball. Medfield has been very active on the offensive glass thus far. You'd think that with all Hopkinton's length, they'd be securing more of these boards, but Medfield is really forcing the issue. Well, it's 34-33. They had it 34-34, but we're going to run with what we see on the scoreboard. So Right. <clears throat> And another jump ball. This one goes right back to Hopkinton. Again, Medfield with the half court trap, waiting for them to cross over, and then they're going to double up. That's what they've been doing all, all game. The Hillers haven't really changed their strategy on how to break it. They've been having trouble, but haven't really tried anything new. Canastrari gets the corner three, oh, knocks sick. it down. Huge shot from the senior, Julia Canastrari. And then almost gets a steal on the other end. Four point lead now for Hopkinton with six minutes left. Nice pass down low. We met with a good cut, can't finish on the layup. Gogolin, nice, uh, didn't block it, but certainly disrupted that shot. Ooh, almost a, almost a travel. Gogolin can't handle the pass. Corralled by Cassieri. Zona with the pass down to Cassieri. She's mm. looking for help, throws the shot up. Can't finish. Now Lakashia looks mm. up, finds Gogolin. Gogolin running, draws the foul. Can't convert, but will be shooting too. Kasha with a nice entry pass and Golan taking it up strong. She she kind of got whacked and went down hard, but poised to hit these two shots here. Thirty-seven, thirty-three, five minutes and twenty-four seconds left. Gogolin's first, nothing but net. Canastari takes a seat. Michaela Pucci, the captain. That's probably a good idea. In. I mean, Canastari, I, I don't know if she's come out of the game. If she has, it's only been for a minute or two the whole time. So Gogolin, two for two. Give her a break before the uh, very end of the last few minutes of the game. Six point lead now for the Hillers. Zona launches the quick three, too strong. Secured by Gogolin. She looks up and finds Kiveny. Kiveny decides to kick it back out. Lakasha kicks over to Morningstar. Felt like they wanted a three, none quite pulled the trigger. Now Kiveny down low with the spin move, draws a foul. Great ball movement. They were patient that time. Uh, didn't allow Medfield to catch up to him. They just kept on moving the ball around and, and uh, got a great shot of it. This is where the money balls are, the free throw line in the fourth quarter and the Hillers are taking advantage of it. First free throw good for Keevney. Second one as well. Big, big free throws. 41 to 33, Hopkinton. Emma Lakasha taking a break. She hit that big three-pointer a little while ago. And Callie Corby's back in. Morningstar again applying pressure on McCarthy, who's been the primary ball handler for Medfield. We met stuck at the baseline. Got called for the travel. Another turnover for the Warriors. Hiller ball. Morningstar falls down, loses the ball. And McCarthy finds her teammate, Emma Anderson, for the layup. Boy, they're hanging around. Six point lead, four minutes left. And a turnover oh, two there. Two consecutive turnovers. Coach Greco's 
Morningstar telling your teammate Callie Corby, I need you up here next to me. Morningstar caught in a oh, bad spot. Bad. Callie just uh, coming out for a minute. You know, it's par partly the Hillers not taking care of the ball, but Medfield has really created a lot of problems too. McCarthy put the ball on the floor. Morningstar grabbed the ball away in a quick jump ball yeah, called. Was, uh, very quick. And Morningstar did not look too pleased with that one. But in any event, Medfield will be inbounding the ball. Four minutes left, a six point Hiller lead. We met, drives, puts the layup up, too strong. Gogolin. Gogolin grabs the board and she is fouled. Well, she's, she's done a great job in the second half. As I said at the beginning of the half, hadn't heard much from her, but the second half she's fired up. Got a bunch of rebounds, a couple of block shots. Looks like we got and, one and one going for the Hills. And uh, she's hit some foul shots, so she's doing a great job. And she will be shooting at so least one more free throw now. Yep, we got a one and one situation. Both teams are going to basically be in the one and one at this point. First one good for Gogolin. Second one on the way. I mean, they must have hit five or six free throws this quarter, which is almost the whole difference of the, of the game so far. Second one good for Gogolin. She's been money from the free throw line. Just one miss today. Eight point lead. Petit with it at the top of the court. Top of the key. Finds Cassieri. She drives. Shot. Just bounces off the rim. Pucci dribbles it off mm, a medfield foot. I'm fairly certain that went off Petit's foot. That's why Pucci let it go, but ball stays in midfield's possession. And now Meg Zona checking back in for the Warriors, for Big Blue. And Coach Greco gets a timeout with 3.23 left in the contest. Not a bad timeout, you know, gets gather themselves, get everybody composed in the final stretch here, and there haven't been many timeouts the whole game, so the, uh, both teams have a, probably a couple left at least. And um, Medfield's in a position now where they're going to, you know, with an, they're down by eight, so mm -hmm. I think the next minute or so is going to determine, how, you know, if this is going to get close or right. maybe the Hillers could pull away and get into double digits. So we'll have to see how that goes. Well, Coach Greco right now calling that timeout, making sure he draws up a defense to uh, keep this an eight point game. Medfield, like you said, again, looking to try to close this gap within the next minute or so. It looks like we'll be returning to play momentarily as the Hillers come back out onto the court. Lakasha talking with her teammates, making sure everything's clear. Looks like they have their five starters in at this point. Medfield taking their time. <laughs> Referee's going to go nudge them to say, hey, we, we got a game going on here. Now both teams back on the court. McCarthy will inbound for Medfield. Ooh, almost a double dribble there. Anderson launches a three, knocks it down. Oof, that was a big hoop Huge right there. three there from Emma, An Emma Anderson, this, the junior. Now five, just a five point lead for Hopkinton. And Lakasha had a chance to go over half court, but she decided to pass it back to Morningstar. Hopkinton. That's a one on one situation again. So it looks like there'll probably be some free throws in the next, uh, this next three minutes is probably gonna take about 15 <laughs> minutes <laughs> right. to play, which is fine. First one no good from Morningstar. Now Cassieri bringing it up for Medfield. 
Still a five point lead for the Hillers. Cassieri drives off the glass. Great drive from Cassieri. Well, she's a tough matchup. She's really drove baseline there. Pucci did all she could, but that was a tough, uh, tough baseline drive. Now just a three-point lead for Hopkinton. Morningstar somehow cut that shot off, drew the foul. Well, she's uh, she's been to the line a few times. I, you know, um, she's she hasn't been as successful as some of the other Hillers. Uh, here's an opportunity for her with two minutes and 23 seconds left up by three to extend the lead a little bit which they could really use so we met coming back in for Medfield Lauren Cassieri big pretty big situation there uh, just fouled out so um, that's, that's that's huge for Medfield I didn't even notice yep their bright spark Cassieri who's been hitting from the free throw line and from the field, really keeping Medfield in this. She's out, so what will Big Blue do to respond? That's a big one. Now four point advantage for the Hillers. McCarthy looking to take it on her shoulders. Approaching two minutes left in the quarter. McCarthy steps back, jumper, good. Now just a two-point lead for Hopkinton, and Nickerson takes another timeout. Wow, that's out. a huge, huge hoop by the captain, Maggie McCarthy, 5'10 junior. Step back, two-pointer that, um, tell you what, we got ourselves a ball game here, Tim. Yeah, Coach, Coach Nickerson saying Cassieri kept him in it, and now he's hoping McCarthy can take him home. Well, they have a couple other options, in, in like Ali Petit has, has had a good game. And, mm -hmm. um, Emma Anderson come off the bench, hit some key three-pointers for them as well. Yep, so we'll, you know, this is where the coaching and and I don't, I don't know about the foul trouble. I don't, I don't know if there's anyone that has four fouls for any team at this point. Right. But, but uh, certainly free throws are going to be huge. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the beginning of the game when Medfield went – well into the second quarter and didn't have any have any, any field goals, field right. goals uh, and the majority of their their points from the foul line early on uh, they did, they barely missed early on and and if, and if you look at the score now they they'd probably be down you know an extra six points or so but they right. they've uh, definitely had a kept them in the game you know, certainly a great game for them too so far Coach Nickerson getting in some final words. Now both teams on the court. Hawkinson will inbound with 2.01 remaining with, and a two point lead. Again, Lauren Cassieri, the spark plug for this Medfield offense, has fouled out. Under control. Under control. Cascio looking for some way to get over half court. Canastari takes it. Kicks it over, Keeveny fires the corner three, no good. Grabbed by We Met. Got a good shot, just didn't hit it. Minute and a half left. Pass down low to Petit, blocked by oh. Goglin. McCarthy, great play to get it back. Anderson launches a three off the side of the rim. Oh McCarthy my, no pokes call. it loose. Petit grabs the board and she is fouled. Oh my, oh my goodness. Uh, I, I gotta say, Gogolin really, really got slaughtered from behind, no call. Um, I'm not exaggerating. I, uh, the, the Coach Greco will vouch for me. <laughs> He's uh, trying to cut, look at him. He's with the palms up. Mm -hmm. How can they miss that? And they did, unfortunately. Um, Gogolin grabbing rebounds, wor really working hard the second half. And then to compound that, Petit draws a foul. Missed her first one. Still with a chance to get one for Medfield. And she does make the second. 44 to 43, a minute 17 left. Under control. Kansari almost double dribbles there. And then does turn it over. We met grabs it. Now under a minute left. 
timeout Medfield. Wow, I tell you, it's it's unfortunate uh, that the Hillers, with 58 seconds left, still have not figured out how to deal with that half court press, and mm -hmm. it's just led to causing a lot of problems, a whole lot of turnovers. I know we've said that, but that's that's really and been that's a big. That's a story. It's a big it key is a of the story. game. They haven't been able to adapt. They've tried different strategies. They've thrown the ball away various ways, um, dealing with that half court press. And uh, you know, hats off to Medfield for. Uh, that, that one aspect of the game has probably kept them in the game, and now they have an opportunity, Medfield does, to uh, pull ahead if they can get a, get a hoop here. And they have 23 seconds to do that, and there's 58 seconds left in the game. Both teams in the bonus at this point. And there we have it, uh, Michaela Pucci, that was her fourth foul, so that could, be, that could prove to be big. Yep, they, you know, the Hillers have a lot of depth. They've kind of kind of gone about eight deep tonight. Uh, some of the bench players have come off. Kate Hubner's had a great game. Um, Cal Corby's played very well. Regan Keaveny's come off the bench and, and done very well too. Some noise from the crowd. They know big moments are coming. Medfield inbounds it. We met, drives, kicks it over. Petit wanted to launch the three. Oh man, that was Pete Pucci's fifth foul. And there we go, Pucci just fouled out. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. A huge loss for Medfield and Cassieri offset by the loss of Pucci for Hopkinton. Let's see which team can rebound better in the last 51 seconds. Petit will be shooting. One and one. First one rattles in, tie game now. Petit, the senior, in a big moment. Knocks that one down as well. Big, big poops for her. Medfield takes his first lead of the fourth quarter. Almost another turnover there. Hopkinton lucky to get by. Hiller's firing the ball around, looking for a good shot. Medfield turned up the pressure on its defense. And Coach Greco did not like what he saw out there, and he calls a timeout. 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Pucci was, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Canestrara is about to launch it. Um, but Coach Greco intercepted that thought. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is a, a bit of a head scratcher the way the game's gone. The Hillers were in control much of the game and mm -hmm. just left the door open a little bit and Medfield is just slowly but surely taking advantage of every opportunity to get back in the game and they pull ahead and now the Hillers find themselves in a, you know, have, they have an opportunity certainly with 30, 31 seconds left to right. uh, to get a hoop or two. But I have a feeling there's gonna be a little more free throw shooting before the end, end of the game here. Well, the Hillers held a eight point lead with about three minutes left in the game. And since then, it's been a lot of turnovers caused in part mostly by that zone, the, uh, the press from Medfield. And now Medfield suddenly finds themselves ahead, whereas most of the game they've been looking to play catch up. I mean, I, th I, I, I think I'm right when I said it was 44 to 36 at one point with your eight point lead and, uh, and uh, Medfield's rattled off nine straight points. Lakasha trying to get it in. She does find Morningstar. 10 seconds. Canestrari drives, pulls up, short on the jumper, rebounded by foul. Anderson. Well, like we said earlier, Tim, you know, with um, Cassieri of Medfield fouling out with three minutes left and the Hillers were up, that was a wonderful development, mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it just hasn't gone that way, the way one would think. With her fouling out, it's gone the other way. Yep, and Medfield has responded quite nicely to that. Other other players besides her have stepped up. Anderson's free throw hits off the front rim but bounces in. Now a two-point lead for the Warriors. 23 seconds left in the second free throw upcoming.
And that one is good as well, a three-point lead. Got to get it up. Shot clock off for the Hillers. Let's see what they try to do. They need a three. Probably a quick two, maybe try to foul. But Morningstar dribbles the ball into the hands of Meg Zona. Timeout, I think. And then there was a jump ball, and Coach Greco calls a timeout. Yeah, fortunately for, for the Hillers, they had the possession going their way because. That would be huge yeah. if it was the other way. Yep. 14 and a half seconds left for Hopkinton. They can still try to get a quick two and then try to play the foul game and hope that Medfield misses. We'll see what Coach Greco decides to draw up. Well, I hope he has a really one of those three-point plays to draw up that will go down. I probably will look for for Julia to maybe come come off a pick or something. Uh, we have a couple of options there, but that would be probably option one. And uh, maybe they'll use her as a decoy, and Medfield's probably looking for that, and maybe they'll go right. to someone else. But 14 and a half seconds left. Uh, we certainly, it's coming the, down to the end. The Hiller crowd has been a little bit. Uh, Less vocal in the, in the last five or six minutes. And Medfield's a little more fired up at the moment. So let's see if the Hillers can come through here with a three-pointer to tie it up or figure out a way. Just the type of game you'd expect from two of the premier basketball programs in the Tri-Valley League, Hawkinton and Medfield, both typically have strong programs. Goglin goes for the quick time two. Timeout, timeout. That was, that's about all you could do. That was, that was perfect. Sorry to interrupt you. That's all right. Yep. Yeah. That was about the best scenario you could hope for. Yeah, knock off about two seconds, now down one. Now you gotta play the foul game and hope that Medfield misses at least one. Great execution though by Hopkinton on that play because if you're gonna go for two there, you need to try to shave off as few seconds as possible and they did exactly that. They did a good job and you know, Lakasha was patient. She let, she let the play let develop. The, yes, yep. right. <laughs> And then Gogolin got the ball, got her space, put up the shot, and now we just have a one-point lead for Medfield with 12.1 seconds remaining. See if they can grab a turnover here. This is going to be interesting. Medfield again extending the timeout. All they can get out of that, and you know, I guess at some point Squeezing you gotta, a dry. You got to call a technical, but I, I don't think it's at that point yet. But Hillers are fired up to try to steal a ball here. Again, 12 seconds remaining, a one-point lead for Medfield. Both teams in the bonus. Got a foul. Ball gets in. They have to foul immediately. They haven't. And then a jump ball is called. However, this one should be going to Medfield. It goes to Medfield. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That Hiller think crowd gets excited. The yeah, ref made I the wrong it, call. I think they have the possession arrow. They hadn't updated it. So right. I, I want to say it goes back to. Because Hopkinton got that last big one. Yeah. So this one should be going to Medfield. Yeah. I think they would have been better served to foul there, you know? Mm -hmm. They let a few seconds tick off the clock before deciding to foul or trying to foul. Ball gets into Anderson. Oh, you got a foul. No a foul. foul yet. And looks like Medfield's going to dribble out the clock, but Goglin finally gets a hand on McCarthy with 1.7 seconds left. Not much time at all for Hopkinton. Seven seconds off the clock there. Free throw off the front rim, but rolls in for the senior, the junior captain, Maggie McCarthy. Another one up and in, now a three-point lead. Yep, they got a minute and a half, a minute and a half. I wish it was a minute and a yeah, half. Right. It's a second and a half. Second and a half, yeah. They need some sort of a Hail Mary, miracle Doug Flutie, uh, <laughs> miracle in Miami. Um, well, let's see what Coach Greco can dial up here. I'm dating myself, but uh, that was a... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's still relevant. <laughs> Well, it's certainly that Hillers find themselves uh, in a tough spot, uh, kind of stating the obvious, but, uh -huh. you know, they're going to need to heave one up, maybe a long football type of pass. They do have time. To take know, maybe one dribble if they had to, but. Throw the yeah. ball all the way. The clock doesn't start until the ball is touched inbound, so they're going to probably launch it. They can't really afford to, I don't know if oh, they get the ball under their hoop. 
So obviously in the pros, you get it at half court right. a little bit better, but that's a long way yeah, this away. Is, this makes it a bit tougher. So they're going to have to heave it to somebody and one Hope dribble for the and, best. and shoot. Gogolin gets it. She takes a dribble, launches well short of the hoop. And the Hillers fall in their first game here at home, 49 to 46, a loss to Medfield. Boy, Tim, I don't know what to say. It's disappointing, but you got to tip your hat to Medfield. They just wouldn't go away. And uh, the Hillers left the door open, and uh, Medfield took advantage of it. But a, a well-played Tri-Valley League game, and you know uh, the Hillers will get another shot at them later in the season at Medfield. And um, you know we have a, another home game to, uh, this Thursday, so uh, with Norton coming in town. So. All right, so the Met Medfield improves to 3-0 and on the young season, and Hopkinton drops to 2-1. and And once again, before we head out, we'd like to thank our crew today, our producers, Mike Terosian and John Ritz on cameras. Mike Terosian, John Ritz, Mary Arnaud, director Tom Dings, and graphics Samantha Dings. Once again, thank you guys, and we will be here again on Thursday to see you versus Norton. Have a good night, everybody.